The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminas on Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. Um, a lot to talk about this week, especially on the basketball docket. Um, we just had the Martin Luther King tournament. Um, we're going to break down the MLK Classic at West Bloomfield. Also, um, we're going to break down some boys basketball a little bit. Um, but when you look at the main stories here, obviously, um, basketball is right now the king right now um, throughout. And there's been, I think you're starting to get a really good idea where everybody's at. Um, it's clear to me where I think some people are at right now. I mean, other than that, I mean, like, I don't know where um, others are at right now. So we're going to look at all those teams today, and we're going to take a look at see how everybody does, and we're going to go from there. Um, we're going to recap the Martin Luther King Classic. Um, I want to share my thoughts and opinions on that, on those games, obviously. Um, of course, they had the MLK Classic that took place at West Bloomfield. Um, Farmington Boys was at Jackson um, when they took on... Um, Wayne Memorial, it was a 54-30 win for Farmington over um, Wayne Memorial. We're going to break that one down and what the impact does that do for Farmington going forward there. Um, when you look at girls basketball right now, people are going to say, okay, um, I looked at the AP top um, teams in the state. I mean, West Bloomfield deservingly so being ranked number two, but Rochester and Lake Orange both honorable mentions, and I think that makes a lot of sense because – you know, when you look at the way that both those teams have been playing, um, yes, now Lake Orion had that loss to Detroit Renaissance, was a top team in the state, uh, but it was close in the score indicated. Um, we're going to talk that in a minute. Um, Rochester, obviously, with the way they've been playing, they had that tough loss to Clarkston. Um, so let's look at, of course, the um, the games. Obviously, you know, the first game that took place was at 11 a.m. when Riverview took on Groves. Um, that game was 53-46 in favor of Riverview. I mean, Looking at that game, it was a really slow pace game, um, but ended up going the Pirates way over the Falcons. Um, bottom line was in that game was, you know, Groves played. I thought Groves shot the ball very well behind Sierra Rocco. Um, Caitlin Sanders held more than her own in that game. Um, but at the end of the day, Riverview made more shots and, um, got the win against Groves. Um, when I look at Groves in the future, you know, when I look at them, I mean, like, the way that they play, obviously, you got Cameron Little there, you got um, you got Lily Gallagher, you got, um, you know, you got Caitlin Sanders, you have Sierra Rocco. I mean, everything, the whole thing flows through Sanders. And, you know, and I know Caitlin Sanders is more than capable of being a good player. I mean, like, you know, she's, she's, I mean, she can go outside, shoot threes. Um, not as solid inside as I thought. I mean, like, I, I mean, like, I know Sanders' game really well. Um, you know, and then at the end, she got a little tired there. And, um, you know, that is a cause of concern um, when you look at Coach Allison Heidi's team is, you know, when you're going up against teams that are, that run, you know, I mean, you, you can have your way against Groves. I mean, like, that's pretty much what it is. Um, that's what I saw in the game, but Riverview to me, I didn't think it was very good. And I, and I'm going to be flat and honest with you. I mean, like they just run a one, two, two zone. Um, they didn't do much, um, to really impress me. I mean, it caused some turnovers with Groves. I mean, like they basically just, you know, they, they just took advantage of Groves' mistakes and went down and scored. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, bottom line is that game, obviously Groves played, um, you know, obviously, you know, Riverview played, you know, just enough to win, but I didn't think neither team was that impressive. I mean, I mean, I'm going to be flat honest with you. I mean, like, I thought, you know, Groves would be a little bit better um, than I thought, but, you know, right now, I it's hard for me to trust them right now. It really is, um, especially what they got coming up. I mean, they got Lake Orion coming up, and then they got, um, they, I mean, they got the rest of the league as well coming up. They got you got Clarkston, they still got to play. I mean, obviously, you still got to play everybody else in the Red one more time. Um, so when you really look at um, Groves, there is a cause of concern for Coach Allison Heidi's team. Now, what helps is when they get in the postseason, I think Groves has a shot here. 
I mean, considering what the play of Birmingham Marion, I mean, the way that they've been playing. I mean, you look at the Mustangs, I mean, they haven't been playing really good basketball. I mean, yes, they got Mackenzie Swanson, but I just think when you look at Groves, their case, I think they got a shot. Um, but we'll see. I mean, but when I look at Groves, there's a lot of concern when I look at the Falcons right now. I mean, clearly there is. Um, when, when looking at me, I didn't think Ruby was that good, but you know, they ended up finding a way and they ended up winning that game. And, you know, for, for Groves, you know, I think there's some concern. I mean, they didn't look, I mean, they gave 64 to Stony Creek. Um, they gave up 53 to, um, Riverview. I mean, like, and now they got to play Lake Orion coming up. That'll be really interesting. Um, how they match up with the Dragons, considering the Dragons will have a back to back. Um, playing flushing um on Wednesday night and then playing against Detroit. I mean like and then you know and then they have to play Groves Thursday night. So that'd be really interesting to see. But the good news for the Lake Orient is that game's at home though. But now let's talk the Detroit Renaissance Lake Orient game. I mean, you know when I look at the score here, I mean yes it does say 67 42, but you gotta look at the halftime score and it said 26 24 Renaissance at half. And that's a credit to Coach Bob Bridges and his team um, for they basically played their tails off in that game. They basically, I thought at time they got Detroit Renaissance very uncomfortable. They got um, rattled, forced Deshaun Wood, coach of Detroit Renaissance, to call two timeouts. I mean, they completely got them rattled. And then, you know, Detroit Renaissance, you know, they hit 10 threes. And shot over 50%. What can you say about that? What can you say about that? I mean, you know, and I read the student athlete newspaper today. And I said, you know, I said, look, you know, the game was a lot closer than the score indicated. And yes, Detroit Renaissance had that 26-7 third quarter run. I mean, yes. I mean, like, but you look at the season averages that Detroit Renaissance had this year. Um, and I was, I really wasn't impressed with Detroit Renaissance at all. I mean, Caitlin Sanders, yeah, she had 11. I know she had 36 against Belleville. Um, I mean, Amari Hardy, I really wasn't impressed with her. Um, yeah, she got 11, but I, I just thought, you know, that, um, you know, I, I mean, like, I just thought that, um, you know, you know, I, I, I mean, normally she's a double-figure girl. She's a double-double double girl. I mean, like, she did have her fair share of points and rebounds, yes, but not the extent that I thought she would. Um, Nevaeh Otis, um, the Groves transfer. I mean, Nevaeh Otis, to me, her story's been, you know, she played that one year at Groves as a freshman under Coach Antoine Simpkins, um, then went to Detroit Renaissance, sit out a year last year, and playing a full season this year. I really wasn't impressed with her. I mean, I really wasn't. Um, but I thought, you know, I mean, yes, she had nine points, but I just really wasn't impressed with that team. If Detroit Renaissance played West Bloomfield and you put those two teams on, I would take West Bloomfield over 15. I mean, that's how much I would say right now. Um, because what West Bloomfield did to Detroit Cast Tech was pretty remarkable. I mean, 71 to 41. That was impressive. But I'm going to talk West Bloomfield in a minute. Um, for Lake Orion, I mean, obviously, you know, they played their tails off. I mean... Audrey Wishmeyer had nine. Maddie Everett at eight. Chloe Wiegers at seven. Um, when you look at the speed of this game, it was a different, like, atmosphere for them. I mean, considering, you know, that might be, them and Detroit Renaissance and West Bloomfield might be the, might be the most fastest teams that Lake Orion's going to see all year long. I mean, they have a different style pace of offense. They can go fast pace. They can go quick pace. I mean, and for Lake Orion to held more than their own, I mean, and the way they played that game, particularly in the first half, basically, I felt like in the first half, they were the better team than Detroit Renaissance. I mean, yes, in the second half, Detroit Renaissance um, took over with that 26-point third quarter. Um, do I say that game was dominating for Detroit Renaissance? No, absolutely not. Because that game... You know, if that game learns something about both teams, I'll tell you what, Lake Orion can really defend. I mean, yes, the, the 67 points they gave up, but they can really defend. They can really get at you. 
there is a reason why I think the Dragons deserve to be an honorable mention in the state of Michigan. And that is the reason why. Their defense is solid. They have playmakers. You have Chloe Wiegers. You have Maddie Ebert. You have, you have Audrey Wishmer. You have Taylor Dinda. You have um, Ryan Palasak. I mean, and then you, and in your bench is deep. You have Grace Sullivan. You have um, Jordy McCaffrey. I mean, like you have an Allie May, a Fontana Blackney. I mean, you look at this, and they have a great summit. You look at this team, you know, for Coach Bob Bridges. Obviously, this team's deep. I mean, clearly. And their only two losses was an overtime game to the, to Rochester at Little Caesars Arena and then a tough one to Detroit Renaissance. I mean, obviously, the number one team in the state. That says something right there. That really does. Um, So when you look at Lake Orion heading into the future, they got Flushing coming up, then you have Groves, and then you have the second half of the year with, starting with Clarkston on the road. Then you got Oxford. Um, it's a tough road for the Dragons. It really is. Um, but I feel more, I feel a little more encouraged with the way that this team played in that game against a very good opponent like Detroit Renaissance. Now, when I look at the road ahead for them, I mean, like, it is tough. It is very difficult. But when I look at the Dragons right now, I think that they're a team, you know, I don't think anybody wants to see come postseason time. I mean, yes, everybody's looking at that Lake Orion Clarkson matchup and saying, okay, you know, this is going to be very interesting because Lake Orion hasn't seen Eli Eliana Roback. Clarkson hasn't seen Kylie Heck. Um, so, so I'm curious to see how that matchup goes the second time around in Clarkston. I mean, this will be a really interesting matchup. Um, but for Lake Orion to, you know, to hold more than her own against a team that shot over 50% from the field, 10 threes, that says a lot right there. And you had to make, and you had, virtually had to make Detroit Renaissance play their best game in the third quarter. You basically had to. And for me, that's a testament to the Dragons. It really is. Um, with the way that that team played, they hard, I mean, it was a hard fought game. They battled, they competed. I mean, like, you know, I'll tell you what right now. I am more encouraged with the way Lake Orion played in that game against a very good opponent like Detroit Renaissance than, you know, if they have that effort the rest of the way. Um, if they have that effort, I will tell you what, they're going to be one of the, they're going to be a very scary team in the state this year. I mean, that's clearly where I have with the Dragons right now. I mean, like, you got to be encouraged if you're Coach Bob Bridges um, with the play, the effort that this team gave. They never quit. They never backed down in that game. Um, and then the third game, we have Belleville versus Southie Darts and Tech. Um, this game was a complete blowout, 90-53. to 53. I mean, there's no words to describe Southfield. None. I mean, this team is absolutely atrocious defensively. You give up 90 points. Yes, Belleville's good. I'll give them that. But you give up 90 points to them. 57 at halftime. How do you explain that? How do you explain that? If you're Coach Shak Shakia Coltrane, what is the one thing that I have stressed to them so many times is you can score all you want, but you die, they don't stop anybody. You got to stop somebody. And it's clear to me when I look at the stats, that the Southfield Arts and Tech doesn't stop people. They can't. I mean, they give up. They give, I mean, giving up over 90 points, yes. To a Belleville team, yeah, Belleville's good. I get it. But 90 points to somebody, that's inexcusable. It really is. And I know there's been a few games where they get up over 60. Do you change your identity? I don't know if you do or not. But when you look at Southfield and you look at the stat line, you have players on that team. You have Jalen Austin. She's been to a state final. You look, you have Kamara Page. You have, um, you have, um, I mean, the Kamara Page is a good player. I mean, you get, I mean, like, I mean, you got players who can play it. I mean, yes, the win against Berkeley, that's a, that's a big deal. But I'll tell you what right now, Berkeley's a different team now than they were 
two weeks ago. <laughs> A&T's got to change something defensively. They've got to. You can't just give up over 60 points in a quarter and expect to win. And a half, my bad. You can't do that. You're asking for trouble. a t that's what it is. It's defense is a problem. And you still got to play the rest of the ride a second time around. You still got to. You have it in you to defend people. You did it against Berkeley. And now you did it against Berkeley, and now you can't do it against a good team. In a showcase game, you give up 90 points. I don't know what Coach Shakira Coltrane's thinking. I don't know. But something's got to change with that team. Something has to. You can't just give up 90 points in a game and expect to win. You can't just go in there and think we got to outscore people to win. Because it looks like that's what you got to do. And I don't know if you have the players to do it. I don't know. So if you're in T right now, you know, you're giving up points and bunches. You still got to play the rest of the red. You got Ferndale on the schedule. I'll tell you what, Ferndale's not an easy game for you now. Ferndale just beat Avondale. And a shocker, they just beat them. Ferndale might not be an easy game for you. So, unless you figure out something defensively, this is a team that I think's got some trouble. Lumen. I mean, yes, they got Troy coming up. And yes, Troy's a very young team. But I'll tell you what, they got players that can beat you. Diamond Prince can beat you. Reagan Zider, we know, can beat you. I mean... If you're troll, if you're Southfield, you gotta def start defending people. I mean, don't give me that excuse and say, "Oh, we can go and we can go and show our players and have big games." Yes, you can. You can have those offensive stats, but you gotta defend, and they don't. They clearly don't, and the stats prove it. The numbers prove it. That's my thoughts on A&T. They got to defend. That's what it is. They've got to defend. Clearly. And then we have West Blue Bay versus Detroit Cast Tech. Um, this game was very interesting. I mean, 31-2 first quarter. Um, this game was dominated by West Bloomfield. Um, but what I noticed was looking at Coach Jeremy McAllister's um, Presser to Matt Mowry, um, and he wasn't really thrilled. I'm going like, why is that? You know, I mean, like, you just won by 30 points. Um, and you're not happy that you won by 30 points? I'm going like, come on now. You know what I mean? You know, I, I mean, there, there are teams that can win games by 30 points. I mean, like, yeah, they're the defending Division one state champions. Um, I mean, you just played a very tough schedule, obviously. You're going to get, I mean, like, you played some really good teams. I mean, you played Epsilon Arbor Prep. You played, um, Ypsilanti, Lincoln. I mean, you know, you played um, you played um, Chicago, Kentwood. I mean, like, you know, but dominating a young team like Detroit Cast Tech, you know, going up thirty-one to two in the first quarter, you know, that pretty much tells you about West Bluefield. Bolt Davis sisters have been solid. Bolt Hendricks sisters have been solid. Um, I still think the bench is a bit of a concern. Yes, I mean their bench should have fifteen points. Um. But you got to figure out, and I and I agree with him. You know, there's gonna be a time where he's gonna have to use that bench in in um crunch time, like let's say if the Davis sisters do get in foul trouble, if both Hendrick sisters get in foul trouble, or Destiny Washington gets in the foul trouble. I mean, like you know, there has to come a time where you gotta be, you gotta rely on that bench. I mean, you know, so when you look at West Bloomfield and say, okay, you're sitting nine two. Really nice spot. Um, I think now 10-2, I think. Um, but if you're Coach Jerry McAllister, I think you're fine. I'm not. I wouldn't be worried about it. You know what I mean? I think that um, you got the players to do it. You know what I mean? But he's finding ways to get his kids to get better. And I think that's a good, good 
learning tool for them is, you know, you can't just you can't just come in here and expect, you know, the Davis sisters, the Hendrick sisters to do their thing and dominate, you know, and then come in here and just like, you know, play basically like middle of the road. You know what I mean? You got to come and perform. So I guess that's what he was saying. So I do like the comments he did say about it. Um, I do think there is a way for them to get better. Um, bottom line is when I look at West Bloomfield, I mean, like they got, I mean, they, they're going to be a serious team. I mean, they're a serious contender, you know, to repeat as state champions. And I think coach Gerald McAllister wants to make sure of that. I mean, coming up, they do got Rochester. They got Lake Orion coming up. I mean, you know, and I've said, you know what I mean? And I've said before the season started, I said, I thought Lake Orion would give, would give West Bloomfield the most trouble. Um, and I still think they, they could considering with their heart and effort. Um, with Rochester, it's an interesting matchup too, because you know, they got the size. I mean, Rochester's got size. I mean, Alice Max, Kylie Robinson, um, you know, even in their loss to Clarkson, they didn't have Natalie race. I mean, she didn't play in that game. Um, I would expect race to be back for that game. Um, so when you really look at, the MLK showcase over at West Bloomfield, I mean, like, it kind of really, you know, you kind of like, you know, it was very interesting. I mean, a couple of games that were really classics and close. I know Carmen Ainsworth got a win over Westfield Prep. Um, Grand Blank knocked off Williamston. Um, but other than that, I mean, like, you know, you kind of, I mean, like, I don't know if I would say if it was expected. I mean, I know um, a lot of people look at, you know, when, at games, at games, when you look at statistics, obviously, you know, I thought, I thought the um, Lake Orion Renaissance game was close in the score indicated. Um, West Bloomfield, Detroit Cast Tech, you know, West Bloomfield was in firm control there. Belleville was in firm control of a &T. Um, and Riverview and Groves, that went down the wire, but Riverview made a lot more shots and found a way to win that game. They did. So, that's my take on the West Bloomfield Showcase. Um, speaking of the division, um, obviously when you look at every division right now, I mean, like mostly the teams that were in the MLK showcase were in the red division. Um, of course, um, Rochester, I think Rochester, um, is a team that, um, you know, with brace, I think they're a much different team. I mean, like, but I'm curious to see how they do against West Bluefield. I mean, haven't played in a while though, which is a little concerning. I mean, yeah, they had that loss to Clarkson. Um, Clarkson looks like they're starting to come back a little bit. Eliana Roback's back, and I think that's a big deal for them. <laughs> um, Ava Hernandez, Kira Tomey, um, have been playing really good basketball for them lately. Um, and then, you know, Troy's had, Troy's had some tough luck, um, lately. Um, and then you had, um, as I mentioned earlier, we talked about Groves, Lake Orion, a and T and West Bloomfield, um, you know, that's pretty much the red right now. When you look at the red, um, I still think when you look at the red right now, I, I, I think it's West Bloomfield. I mean, Rochester right now would be the second place team, but I think Lake Orion will have a huge say about it. Um, followed by Clarkston, Stony Creek, obviously they're starting to roll again. Um, I think Clarkson, Stony Creek, that's going to be a good game. I really think that'll be a really good one when those two teams play. Um, I am very curious the matchup between Sarah LaPrairie against Eliana Roback. That's going to be the match to really watch. And then, or they could put Mia Carson against Eliana Roback and then Sarah LaPrairie guarding Ava Hernandez. Now that would be just really interesting. And it come down to a battle of inside between Lily Solik and, um, and um, Kira Tomey. That would be a real interesting matchup. And then, Mia Zorsky, in my opinion, is the wild card in that game. Um, you know, I th if Zorsky has a big game for Clarkston, um, I think that, you know, they would win that game. But we'll see. I mean, we will clearly see in that game. We really will. Um, in the white, um, everything is starting to come down to um, North Farmington against Oxford. And everything looks set for that Thursday matchup. We're going to preview that one. That's a big game right there. Um, the team that has me impressed is Berkeley. I mean, are they back? 
I mean, they just went into Royal Oak and beat Royal Oak, a very young team, young but good team, um, 35-28. Um, Melvin Nolan, Sammy Winthrow, um, Jillian Gomes coming back. That's a big deal there. Um, if you're Coach Cody Faulkner, you might you might have starting to turn things around a little bit. And, you know, that could be a good sign for you. I mean, but I'm not going that far yet. I mean, like, it's hard for me to trust. It is really hard for me to trust a um a Berkeley team that, you know, is coming off a really tough loss and you've won at least a couple games, and that's a good thing. That's a good sign for you. I mean, but Berkeley right now, I think they're rolling right now. They're red hot right now. They're playing good basketball right now. Um, I think that the Bears, the way that they're playing, um, I think they could be a team that they could seriously, seriously contend. Um, but do I do I expect in this division this year? Probably not, because obviously North Farmington and Oxford are the two top teams in the division right now. Harper Woods, you know, they're gonna say, well, what about us? We got a case here. Um, you just lost to Oxford, um, so it's hard for me to trust Harper Woods right now. I mean, like, especially because they haven't played North Farmington yet. So they got to play Oxford one more time up there at Oxford. That'll be really interesting. They still got to play North, as mentioned. Um, they got Royal Oak on the road at home as well. So that'll be really interesting. Um, see home. Um, been a hot and up and down with them. Adams has been struggling a little bit. Um, Troy Athens. I, I, it's hard for me to explain Troy Athens right now just with the way that they're playing. Um you know, it's hard for me to explain Troy Athens, really. Um, you know, where the heck has Skylar Emerson been? That's clearly what I would have to say right now when looking at Troy Athens is, where in the world has Skylar Emerson been? Um, see home I mentioned earlier, Addie Flynn has been playing really good basketball for them. Um, they need more than Addie Flynn. I'm wondering where Shea Manchester's at. Um, if Manchester can find her magic again, I think that Seahome could make some noise. I really do. I mean, the district looks winnable for them. Um, but we'll see. I mean, we will see. Um, we're in the people of the North Farmington Oxford game. Um, this is the game a lot of people in the white have been looking forward to because Oxford's won 10 straight. Um, the only loss was Lake Orion early in the year. Um, North Farmington undefeated. North Farmington, of course, rides to the left for Penelope Crary. Oxford rides, of course, they're one of the best starting fives in the league. Um, you look at players like Miranda Winemko. You look at Peyton Richter. You look at Nevaeh Wood. You look at Sophia Robb. You look at Allison Huffstetter. Um, to me, the matchup I am keeping an eye on is who is going to guard Leffler. Is it Robb or is it Huffstetter? That is the big question. Huffstetter's their best defender. Obviously, North Farmington has two of them. You have Penelope Crary. You have Sella Luffler. You clearly look at this matchup and say, okay, if North Farming, if Oxford has a good chance to win this game, they are much better inside. And that is true. Because you have Nevaeh Wood and you have Peyton Richter there. And then you have the wild card of this game is Miranda Winemko. Winemko when when on fire, she can take over a game by herself, literally. I mean, that's how good Miranda Winepko is. The bench is a concern in this game on both sides. I think if it if it comes down, if Sel if Sel if Sel Leffler takes over this game, Oxford's in trouble. If Oxford plays the defense that they're capable of, um and really creates it to be very uncomfortable for North Farmington because North Farmington's a team, if they go north of M59, if they go north of um, M24, if they go like north of Silverbell Road, they struggle. They really struggle. Um, and I think for, if you're Coach Jeff Simpson, that's the problem you got to deal with. You're going to Ian Smith Gym. You're going into that building. That's not an easy place to play. I mean, Oxford is a very tough place to play. And to go against that team, that team who's been red hot right now, the way that they've been playing, it's gonna, it could be really interesting. <laughs> I've been hearing the word split when you look at between Oxford and North Farmington. 
Could it happen? Maybe. Um, but when I look at it on paper, you know, people are going to say, well, North Farms has got the two best guards. Yes, they do. But I think Oxford team is team better, better rounded team oriented because, you know, they got the inside players. It's hard for me to trust Eliza Muller and um, it's a jihad. It's really hard for me to trust them inside um, going against Oxford. But if, but if North can get them in the foul trouble, then that could create some problems for Oxford. So we'll see. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see what style, what type of style takes over on Thursday night over at Ian Smith Gym. I'm pretty sure Oxford Community Television will have that game. I know the crew there very well. Um, I do like Oxford in this game over North Farmington because of the travel for North Farmington. And I just think that the inside game, and I think Miranda Wanemko can take over this game. I really do. I mean, they got no answer for Wanemko. They really don't. Um, and Oxford's had a loss. Let's not forget that loss to Lake Orion earlier in the year. Um, North Farmington hasn't lost yet. This North has not played the schedule that Oxford has. I mean, yes, they have that win against Stony Creek. That's a big deal. They knocked off Saginaw Arthur Hill as well. But Oxford's got some wins too. They beat Bur Birmingham Marion. I mean, they beat, they've beaten some really good teams. They beat Clarkson too. So, we'll see. And then the blue. Um, Bloompy Hill is still the kings, still the queens of the um, blue. Um, dominant wins again this week. Farmington been... Hot and cold. Um, Ferndale. I mean, they had a big win the other night. I mean, I'm really impressed with them. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, they knocked off Avondale. Um, Avondale's hard for me to explain them right now. I mean, to me, I think Avondale's hit rock bottom a little bit here. Um, Ferndale University's really been struggling. Um... Pontiac's been struggling, getting better, but Oak Park's been playing pretty good basketball lately. I mean, one, two straight. I mean, you know, they're starting to in pick up a little bit, so that's kind of a good thing for them. Um, so when I really look at the the um, entire Blue Division right now, I still think it's Bloomfield Hills with the way that team is. Um, I think the Blackhawks are a team of really, I mean, like, they're, they're rolling right now. To me, I view Bloomfield Hills as a white team in the blue division. That's what I'm viewing them right now. I mean, they're dominating people. I mean, they just beat Ferndale U 80-3. I mean, that says something right there. It really does. And they still got to play Pontiac. And that's going to be just, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. The game that I think we're going to know a lot about Bloomfield Hills is on February 13th when they travel down to the Birmingham Marion to take on the Mustangs. Um, that's going to be the game that, a lot of people are going to know about with them. And we're going to see what happens in that matchup. Clearly. I mean, so we'll see what happens there going forward there. Um, now let's go from girls basketball. Let's go to boys basketball. Um, when you really look at the boys side of things, um, obviously North Farmington, I mean, they're the team that really beat right now. I think the way that they're playing, um, they just knocked off a, um, Good Benton Harvard team, 75-49. Um, Landon Williams in a nice game. Um, Prince Jackson in a nice game. Um, Ryan Hurst has been playing good for North Farmington. Um, I'm curious to see what the Raiders have later in the year. Um, and then you look at um, Oak Park. Of course, Oak Park's been rolling with a lot of confidence the way they've been playing. Um, the Knights have been just just playing good basketball lately. Um, I think a team that's been living on the edge lately has been Clarkston. Um, they just had a big 50-48 win against Troy, um, where, um, you know, that game went back and forth, back and forth, and then Clarkson ended up finding a way. I mean, still, if you're a Clarkson fan, you know, I know we have a lot of people at Clarkson watch our podcast. Um, I think Lifehouse Hanging By The Moment For You is a perfect song for you. I mean, it, it really is for you. I mean, I'm going to be flat honest with you. Um, yeah, that's a good song. Hanging by the moment. That's a, that is a really good song for them. Ferndale, of course, um, Kayla Defoe is back. That's a big deal for Coach Juan Rickman and his team. They've won two straight. Um, I, I mean, like, I still think that 
I still think the schedule, you know, I know that look, reading, reading the top 10 in the county from Scott Bernstein saying about like, the full back, you're saying look out, you know what I mean, but Ferndale, I mean, like, here's the thing. I mean, when you look at the Eagles, and I think what the Eagles is, this is a team that I think clearly they've got, I mean, there's, I mean, like they got some things that still turn around. I mean, you still got Cameron Reed there. Um, you got Chris Williams. Um, it, like I said, it's their time to shine, you know, being behind, you know, Jason Drake and Travion Lewis all those years. And this is their time to shine. And they're saying the league, okay, look out here. I mean, like you've had your fun. Now we're going to have ours. Um, so for me with Ferndale, it's better late than never. I mean, for them. Um, so when I look at the Eagles now, um, that they're, they're basically saying to the state, maybe, maybe the entire red, we're back. I mean, it's, I don't know if it's like, we're back a dinosaur story type of thing, but I just think that, you know, with, um, with Ferndale, it looks like they could be back, and that and that, that is the case, and that's bad news for the rest of the Red Division. Um, maybe even that district um, coming up, and that district is looking more and more very favorable for them. I still think Ferndale University might be the um, greatest threat. I, I don't trust Lincoln King Academy in that district. I really don't. Um, and then you look at them, um, and then there's Adams. Obviously, Adams just got Brady Prescorn back. Um, and we know what Brady Prescorn can do. I mean, you know, you obviously you have Peter Caracas, you have um, William G, um, th- proven three point shooters. Um, I mean, Adams, it looks like they're starting to come back in the thick of it a little bit. I mean, like, so we'll see what happens. I mean, like, with um, with this division, I think that right now, North Farmington still the cream of the crop in the division. Um, <coughs> Ferndale might have a strong say. Um, Adams, we know has been up and down, um, Oak Park, we know they're good. And then Clarkson's basically like playing, hanging by the moment by Lifehouse. Um, I would love to see Clarkson athletic director, Jeff Cozen play that song before Clarkson takes the court one of these days. I would love to see that because clearly that's what Clarkson season's been like the last few weeks has been. Hanging by the moment, winning tight games, winning close games. That'll help you come postseason time, obviously. But, you know, you got to be careful. I mean, too much of those tight games, you know what I mean? It can come back and bite you. I mean, especially in the division that you're in with the red. So, we'll see what happens there going forward there. Um, To the white now. Um, When you look at the white, um, you look at, of course, Troy's coming off a tough loss to Clarkston. Bounce back win against Roseville. Um, Mason Parker at 30 points. Um, six threes. Um, you look at Troy, there's still some question marks regarding depth with them. Um, but Mason Parker's really shown he can play. Yeah, both white sides. Um, Darius and John playing good basketball. Chase Kniper's been playing good basketball. Um, Carter Cosmano and Zach Pinoza have been really solid for Troy. Um... I will be very, I mean, when you look at the division right now, I still think Troy is the favorite in this division because of that proven experience. I mean, like, I mean, like, but you never know. I mean, we'll see what happens. But I think Troy, with the way they're playing right now, um, if they can get some bench play besides um, John Whiteside, um, maybe a Bryce Parker um, that could step up. I mean, like, I think Troy could be, you know, looking at, Maybe some good things happening for Coach Gary Frelick and his team um, going forward there. Um, Bloomfield Hills, the way that they've been playing, I mean, like, yeah, they had that loss 89-62 to 62 to um, to um, St. Edwards, Ohio. I mean, like, Noah Adams at 28, Drew Wilson, the freshman at 17. Um, when I look at Bloomfield Hills, um, obviously, Drew, um, Drew Wilson's been really been that DJ Lee type player for Bloomfield Hills. I mean, because you know Adam Fish is going to get his points. I mean, you know, but Drew Wilson's basically saying, you know, making making a statement for himself, obviously. I mean, like, he likes to steal the ball. He likes to, um, you know, create for himself. I mean, like, he's a he likes, I mean, like, he, I mean, do I, is he a good defender? I, I mean, like, 
you know, I, I mean, like, that's hard to, um, you know, that's to be discussed. But when I look at Bloomfield Hills right now, I mean, obviously they're in a bit of a losing streak. But now they haven't played in about a couple weeks prior to that game. I mean, they got Dearborn Heights Robichaud coming up, and then they got Lake Orion, and that'll be a really interesting game when they play the Dragons um, with the way that they're playing. Um, but for Bloomfield Hills, obviously you got C.J. Jackson there. You got Ahmad Taylor there. Brand New Ellen in the interior. Um, I'm curious to see how, um, and then I'm curious to see how this bench goes out for Boomba Hills. I mean, like, obviously, you got some players on that bench who are solid. Um, but, you know, obviously, everybody knows the head of the snake of the Boomba Hills Blackhawks is Noah Adamchich. Um, obviously, the way that they're playing, I mean, they're playing really, really well right now. Um, Groves, right now, when I look at them, um, this is a team that, is rolling under Coach Mark West. Um, big game with Adams Lumen. I mean, I'm curious to see how this game's going to look between Adams and Groves. I mean, like, considering, you know, with league play coming up, um, I really like how Mark West has really done with this team. He's really changed it up a little bit. I mean, Jack Abbott's a solid play. I mean, been really good for them. I mean, both Josh's, Josh Gibson and Josh Gibson has been really good in the, in the interior. Um, Gibson could go inside out. Actually, Simpson go inside out. Um, so there's a lot to like with Groves. I mean, like, they've been battle-tested, too. I mean, like, I mean, there's a lot to like with this team. I mean, like, Coach Mark West coming in to a very good situation. Yes, they were a very young team last year, but he has really, really um, done a heck of a job with that program, um, just turning around that that Groves program. I th- I'll tell you what, I think Groves could be a serious player in that Vaughn district over at Bloomfield Hills. Um they might be a team nobody wants to see. I mean, whether it's Birmingham Brother Rice or or um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's or Bloopia Hills. I mean, like those three teams in particular, um, they might be. They're going to be a scary team to watch, especially in that district. Um, Lake Orion. Um, when you look at the Dragons, I mean, like here's a team that you know they were at three and two. Once DJ Morrow came back, this team took off. Um, obviously, Nate Hevrell has been playing really well for them. Blake Liddell, I expect, I got to see a little bit more from him. Um, but I, he's, been, he's been playing pretty good basketball. Kawhi Fry's been playing really well for them. Kevin Tobe's been playing well for them for Coach Jose Andrades. Um, you got to look at, obviously, play at Caden DeGreffenry. Um, he's been playing really good for them. Um, I mean, Gabe Scott's been my biggest surprise of the year right now when I look at the Dragons. I mean, he's been playing some good basketball for them. Um, I, I mean, Lake Orion, I mean, like, they're a team. Yeah, the schedule's going to get tougher, but I'm telling you, I think that Lake Orion can be a serious player um, in this division. And I and I, I said to people, watch out for Lake Orion. And here they are, sitting 6-2, and two, really nice right now. Um, and then there's West Bloomfield. Um, you know, that loss to Harper Woods, how they lost that game. They were in complete control of that. And then they lost in a buzzer beater to Harper Woods. Um, that was a rough loss for Coach um, Arnett Jordan. That was a really tough loss. Um, you know, when I look at West Bloomfield, it's like, okay, there's some mental lapses they get into still. I think it's still a problem for them. Um, they were the complete. They were the better team in that game. And Harper Woods, you know, I mean, they just hung around, hung around, hung around, and they let them off the hook. So... If you're coaching on Jordan, you just got to say, like, look, guys, you know what I mean? You got to keep the pedal of the metal. That's basically what I have to say about West Bloomfield right now. Just keep the pedal of the metal. You'll be fine. Um, and then there's Farmington. I mean, Farmington came off a win against Wayne Memorial. Started to turn things around a little bit. Um, I think the Falcons, they could be a scary team. Um, you know, because you don't know what you're going to get with them. I mean, they've had some good games where they've won. They've had some games where they've lost. I mean, some really tough losses. Um, but at the end of the day here, I think that, you know, when you look at Blue, when you look at Farmington, you know, I still think that they're not a consistent team right now. And we're going to see what happens. I mean, we're going to really see what happens going forward with them, going forward um, with Farmington. That's my take on the white. Um, the blue division, um, I think this division is starting to become more clear and clearer by the day. Um, I think it's going to come down to either Oxford or Berkeley in this division. And, you know, it's kind of a mess early on. Um, you know, I, I figured, okay, Stony Creek had a good chance, but they've been struggling a little bit. Um, 
they've really been struggling. Um, but they had a tough loss in Macomb, Dakota the other night. Um, and um, it was a 45-40 game. Um, but once they get whole, I think Peyton Rumber coming back in a couple weeks will help them a lot. Um, and then you have, um, and then, of course, as I mentioned, you know, Rochester, of course, they don't have commanding pots right now. Once they get pots back, I think they're going to, it'll help things a lot for them. Um, I expect them back probably middle, I mean, like, um, in a couple weeks. Um, see home, they've been starting to play some better basketball lately. Um, one, two straight, had a win against Stony Creek. That was a big deal there. And then they had a big win in the, um, Bishop Foley Classic. Um, I mean, like, so see how I'm starting to turn things around a little bit. Troy Athens has been hot and cold a little bit. Um, and, um, they've been sort of struggling a little bit. Um, Royal Oak, um, when you look at the Ravens, um, yeah, they got back the win calm the other night, but to me, it's clear today with Royal Oak, it's, you know, they rely a lot on that three point shot. I mean, they got the players to do it. I mean, Dylan Hoffman, you got Camden Clark, you have Rashad Wilson, you have um, Davis Arbiter. Um, I would still like to see with them maybe more of an inside game with Coach Aaron Smith's team. You know, yes, you need, you you can rely a lot on the three point shot, but when the three point shot's not going down, you got to have other ways to score. I mean, yes, maybe that schedule they had the non conference really didn't help them. I mean. You I mean you got to clear that you look at Royal Oak and you start off five and zero, oh, and then you run in Lake Orion, and then you basically get you basically get shellacked, and then you lose to Stony Creek. I mean that's that that's not a good feeling if you're Coach Aaron Smith in the te- in the Ravens. I mean like that's not a good feeling at all. Um, so that is a big concern when I look at Royal Oak, and you're gonna have a Berkeley team there that's gonna be motivated to play you, and I'm telling you what. I wouldn't want to play Berkeley right now the way they're playing because this is not your typical Berkeley team. I really like this Berkeley team. I like the play of Jacob Sharif. I like the play of Timmy Rukovic. Um, they've got others who have played really well as, as well for Coach Joe Thermo. They've been battle-tested. They had that tough loss to Dearborn. Um... I really think the Bears could do something special here. I mean, I think them and Oxford are clearly right now the two top teams in this division. Now, the reason why I say Oxford is because they have to play. Now, Jay Champagne did not play well against Lake Warren. He really did not play well. Um, but they have others, too, that can, that can contribute. Both Katie brothers can contribute. You have Dominic Cassisi can contribute. You have, um, you have, um, and then you have Luke Schofer who can contribute. I mean, like, trust me, this team's got some playmakers, and they're well coached under Steve Laidlaw. I mean, Oxford, and that's not mentioning Lucas Botate. I mean, like, Lucas Botate's had some big games. I mean, Dylan Stone's had some big games. I mean, like, Oxford's been a team that's been battle-tested. So, when you look at the blue right now, it's clear to me, when I look at this division, the two top teams in this division are Oxford and Berkeley. I will be very curious to see how they do when they meet. Because let's not forget, Berkeley did beat Oxford twice last year. I mean, like, they beat them at Oxford, and they beat them at, um, and then they beat them at Berkeley last year. So, it's going to be, I think there's more pressure on Oxford than there is on Berkeley. Because Berkeley knows they can beat Oxford. But can Oxford beat Berkeley? That's the big question. I mean, that's a big question for everybody to figure out when you look at the Wildcats and the Bears. Um, I, I mean, like, Royal Oak is still your dark horse, but keep an eye on Rochester and Stony Creek. Um, those are two teams, when they get healthy, walk, look out. I mean, I think those two teams could be in to make some noise in the second half of the season. So that's something to really watch for going forward there. Um, let's go to the goal now. Um Clear as day, I still think it's Harper Woods is still the best team in this division. Um, the Pioneers came off a gigantic win against West Bluefield. I mean, 47-45, came back. I mean, like, they were hung around, they hung around, hung around. And then, all of a sudden, they came back, played good basketball. Um, 
you know, found a way, scored a, sh- scored a three point buzzer beat, three point shot with three seconds to go. Um, clearly his day. Um, got to give credit where credit's due. Um, to coach um Tuan Porter, um and his team. I'm mean, Julian Young. Um, they got playmakers over there, Harper Woods. I mean, like I think the Pioneers, they're a team that could really, really do some wonders in the um gold this year with what they got. I mean, like I'm telling you. I mean, I think they're. I think Harper Woods is ready to make some noise this year. I really do. Um, the second best team in this division is a little bit of a mess because clearly I thought it was Avondale, but they've had some tough losses. Um, Ferndale University, I think, is really starting to turn things around a little bit. I really like what Coach Josh Nix has done with this team. I think they're four and one their last five games. Only loss was to a very good Oak Park team. Um, but Ferndale University, I like how they're playing. I like, the, I like what they've been doing. Um, you know, they've gotten some, they got some key players playing at a high level. Um, they got experience. That's a big deal. Um, I just think what the Eagles, the issue is right now is if you're coach Josh Nix, I think one thing for sure, I would really like for them to do and improve on is build on program strengths. I mean, that's clearly one that, I think they can make some noise on going forward there with the Eagles. Um, but I really like what Ferndale University has been doing um, lately. I mean, you got Rasheed Jones there. You got, um, you got, um, you got, Trevor McG- you got McGee there. You got, um, I mean, they got some playmakers. I really like where the um, Eagles are at right now. I really do. Um, and then there's, um, then there's Avondale. I mean, Avondale coming off a really tough loss. Um, been on and off, um, for Coach Pat Clancy. Um, I think they could turn things around quick. But I mean, like, I'm curious to see what Avondale team shows up going forward. Is it good Avondale or is it going to be inconsistent Avondale? Um, and I think that's something that if you're Coach Pat Clancy, you've really got to really look at is more consistency. Um, and I think, you know, I still think the trajectory is still up for Avondale. Um, but we'll see. I mean, we will see with them going forward there. And then there's Southfield. Um, when you look at the Warriors, um, good win against Detroit Country Day. I mean, like, you're start. I mean, like, yeah, Detroit Country Day is down this year. I mean, I get, yeah, they're down. But it's a good win against a traditional program like them. Um, they're going through a transition over there at Detroit Country Day, changing from coaches. Um, I just think when you look at, Detroit Country Day, I mean, like, they're, they're just not the same team they used to be in years past. Um, I think that, I think that um, you know, when you look at Southfield, maybe, just maybe this could be the chance for them to turn things around for Coach Tawan Porter. Um, oh, Terrence Porter, my bad. I apologize to Harper Woods, Coach Tawan Porter. Um, but I think this might be an opportunity for Southfield Arson Tech to turn their season around. And they need to turn their season around real quick if they want to make some noise going forward. Um, and then our last team is Pontiac. I mean, like, when you look at the Phoenix, and this has been a team that's been really inconsistent with their play. Really, you know, they haven't been able to get over 40 points. That To me, that's a warning sign right there. Um, I don't know where Davion Hall's been for them. Um, I don't know where, you know, they have really, really struggled, you know, lately, and that's not a good sign for Pontiac. And I know it's very unusual for a lot of people surrounding Pontiac and the tradition they have over there. Um, it's very unusual for them to struggle like this, and they are really struggling. I mean, like, it is clear as day that this team is really struggling. I mean. Bottom line is with Pontiac is I know people look at Pontiac and say, be patient with the product. Be patient with these kids. I mean, but there comes a time when patience runs out. And especially at a a program like Pontiac where, you know, that, you know, you expect, you know, you expect to be playing at a high level. You expect to be, you know, back from the good days of Pontiac Northern and Pontiac Central. Back to the days, of course, of Coach Joe Schroeder when he took over the program there. He turned that Pontiac program into a powerhouse. Um, 
But I think Coach Damon O'Neill, you know, with him, he's really struggling. Um, with he's really struggling with the team right now, and I think you know that's it's it's a tough situation for them right now. The fact that they're giving up a lot of points or not scoring a lot, that's a big concern. Um, to me, that is a serious warning sign and serious concern for Pontiac going forward is can this team score enough points? Can they, you know, find that magic of Pontiac basketball that, you know, got them in the past, you know, believing, you know what I mean, that, you know, say, hey, you know what I mean, we can make some noise, we can... You know, I, a lot of people say, are those days far from over? Are those days over? No, I don't think it's, it is. I think Pontiac, you know, when you look at them, if they can turn things around quick, they're, I think they can they can make some noise. I mean, like, who knows? I mean, you know, can they make some noise in the gold? Sure. I mean, they can definitely do it. So we'll see what happens with Pontiac. Um, but when I look at the gold right now, clearly um, the top teams in the division – are Pony are in the in the goal are Harper Woods. Then I think it's Ferndale U right now. Then it's Avondale, Southfield, and then um Pontiac. Um that's my take on the um gold division right now. So when you look at the rest of the of the league in boys basketball, obviously, you know, you're looking at, you know, go I mean like postseason's about a couple months away. I mean two months away. I mean, you started, a lot of these teams are starting league play this week. And, you know, the Reds already started some. We know the Blue has been well underway. Um, you're starting to get a hint where everybody's at. And when I look at the Red Division, you still think North Farmington. You got Ferndale could be a player now. Oak Park's a player. Um, Adams might be on the outside looking in right now. Um, Clarkston. Is a very is in a weird spot right now. I would say with them, um, in the white, Troy still the favorite, followed by Bloomfield Hills. I think Lake Orion and Groves are about evenly matched right now. Um, and then you have West Bloomfield and then Farmington. Um, West Bloomfield with that loss of Harper Woods, it's kind of really hard for me to, you know, I mean like to trust him a little bit. But you know if they can if they if they play on a higher level, high octane level, I think they're going to be more than fine. Um, in the blue, um, as I mentioned earlier, I think that division's going to be down to Oxford and Berkeley. Um, I expect Rochester and Stony Creek to both get healthier. Steve Holmes been playing much better. Troy Athens has been really inconsistent. Um, Royal Oak has been a team that you know I, I they're a great mystery because. When you look at the Ravens, yes, they've had some good wins. Um, <laughs> but the two tough losses, the Lake Orion and Stony Creek, I think are really, really hurting them right now. Um, and then the gold division, as we mentioned earlier, we got Harper Woods. Um, I think the Pioneers right now have an edge on the division there, um, followed by um, Seaholm, I'm sorry, followed by um, Ferndale University, Avondale, Southfield and um, Pontiac. Um, so that's my take on the boys' basketball side of things. On the girls, as mentioned, in the red right now, um, it's West Bloomfield, then Rochester, Lake Orion, um, Stony Creek, Clarkston, um, Groves, Troy, and then Southfield. Um, Southfield, I if they don't defend anybody, that's really what I look at with Southfield. They just don't defend anybody. That's really what it is, and it's showing that game against Belton. Um, the White, clearly Oxford, North Farmington, whoever wins that one's going to be having the leg up in the division. Um, I still, Berkeley right now, I think they're starting to come back to the thick of it, followed by um, Harper Woods, followed by Royal Oak, um, Seaholm, um, Adam, Seaholm, Troy Athens, um, and then Adams, and then... And then in the um, Blue Division, Bloopy Hills, Avondale. I'm sorry, Bloopy Hills, um, Farmington, Ferndale, Avondale, Oak Park. Um, then it's um, Pontiac. And um, we'll see what happens going forward. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. 
Keep an eye on the football situations over at Royal Oak and at Pontiac. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward, and we'll see what happens. Everybody, I'm signing off here. Um, take care. God bless, and I will see you all next week, everybody.